So today we're going to go over a little experiment of mine that uses auto tile maps along with open simplex noise to randomly generate different maps. It does have some significant limitations, but it also just helps visualize what simplex noise is. I thought it'd be a good exercise for showing how to use multiple tile maps and simplex noise to make interesting maps. So the first thing we're going to go over is how to make auto tile. I highly suggest looking into some other tutorials because I'm going to briefly go over it. But basically, the map figures out exactly what picture is supposed to be placed in each cell based on the tiles around that cell. So this picture is decided by the eight cells around it. Now, if you put one here, it changes this original one so it links up and it'll keep changing if you continue to put more and more tiles immediately around this starting one. So this tile doesn't actually have any effect on the original tile. This tile does affect the, here, but this tile, like I said, is only affected by these eight. And how you set this up, you will make a tile map node, and the tile set here will be empty. You'll go ahead and make a new tile set, when you get to this page, you won't have a file here. You'll have to click this Add PNG. I'll put a link in the description so you can get this one. It's just from Open Game Art. It's a great tile map for starting with auto tiles because you need fairly extensive tiles to actually make a proper auto tile. So when we look at this auto tile, the first thing that you're going to have to do is make a region and before you can properly make a region, you're probably going to have to set the snap options. It's just easiest to leave the snap on. So this is how you turn the snap on and off. And the, in the snap options, you'll want to set it to 16 because that's just the size of these tiles. And you'll want to grab everything in this region. And the next thing that we're going to move to is we're going to have a bit mask. Now this bit mask is a three by three minimal. Three by three needs a very extensive tile map and even this one doesn't really fit the bill for what you need, but the, it works very well for a three by three minimal. When you have this bit mask, what, it's, what you're showing is what the neighbors of this tile would be. So like I was talking before, if you have just the tile, because this is the current tile that we're comparing to, so you always have to have one in the middle, really, for it to do anything. If you just have one, if you see that, and we go back to the grass tile set. Now, if I were to add to that tile, to the side here, now it has one adjacent to it on the right side, so that's why it turns to this picture. Now, just so you can see what the difference between 3x3 three three minimal and 3x3 three three just standard is, so this tile right here, it would actually get confused. Uh, in the minimal, it kind of ignores these diagonals if it doesn't really know what to do with it. If you didn't designate exactly what that should be, then it'll just ignore them. And it'll still give you this straight edge one. Because as you can see, this tile has one that should be here and here. But... The, like I said, the 3x3 three three minimal is just a little bit smarter in knowing that you still want a straight line there, uh, and that's why I use it. If, Like I said, if you have a much more extensive tile map, then you can use 3x3. Three three. Uh, but this is an amazingly handy tool. Uh, like I, We'll just do one more example. This tile right here would be like a T, and so we have this one right here, and so it picks out that picture. So... Go out, go, make sure you play around with that. Whenever I make these, I always have to fill everything in and then just fill in a whole bunch of spots just to make sure that everything looks correct. And I usually find one or two that I missed. Uh, you just miss one little square and it can make things look really silly. But overall, once you get it set up, then it's easy to set, it's easy to make the rest of the map. Now, the trick is that we're actually going to make things procedurally, and we're not actually going to add anything into the map right now. So we're actually going to be making four tile sets from that same image, but let's go ahead and look at what we used for code with the grass. And 
what we're doing here in the ready function, I've done a few of these before, we're randomizing so we don't get the same map every time. I'm actually going to shut that off. When figuring things out, it's actually good not to have the randomize on so you can see if your changes are actually making the effects that you want it to. So we're just going to have a variable noise that we're going to set to an open simplex noise. Uh, again, we don't need the random because that just makes the a different noise each time. Uh, we're going to keep it simple with just a one octave noise, and the period is 12. Later on, we can play with these numbers a little bit to get different types of maps that we want, but like I said, for right now, we're just going to keep it very, very simple. We're going to make the grass first, and then we're going to put the roads on, the environment map, and then, which the environment map is the little rocks and the mushrooms that were added on top. And then we're going to make the background. If you remember, there were kind of holes in there, and I don't want it to just be blank inside those holes, we're going to put some type of stone looking walls on the far side of those holes to give them some depth. So to actually make this grass map, we're just going to loop through the map size and then we're going to get the noise and we're going to check to see if that noise is above the grass cap, which is at 0.5, and then we're going to set the cells to zero. Now I'm going to comment that out real quick and show you what that does. So if we're just going to make the grass map, this is what it looks like. So boom, the auto tiles don't do anything. So we just end up with the basic auto tile. The I, I believe you'd end up with the icon, whatever you set for the icon of the auto tile. But what's happening is it's placing all of them and it's not realizing what's it's not even checking really what the bit mask is, all the little red squares that we took the time to place. So what we need to do is we need to take that tile map and we're going to update the bit mask region. You can update a bit mask area, which would be just a specific spot, but a region, you can set multiple things. We're gonna just reset the whole map. So we're going to go from the upper left corner, zero, zero, to map size x, map size dot y, which will be the bottom right corner. And so it's basically going to go through every spot in the map and then change it to what the auto tile should be. So what you end up with is this. You get a nice little border on your grass. So moving on to the road map, we're going to do the exact same thing, except we're going to have different caps. So I don't want to build roads on the holes, and I don't want to build roads exactly right next to the holes, but I want there to be some roads. So basically, I just picked some numbers, and again, we have to play with these numbers if to change. I just thought that these worked fairly decently. So basically, we're going to see if it's less than 0.3 and if it's greater than 0 0.05. Then we're also going to set the road to that auto tile, which we'll take just a quick look at since we've already done some auto tiles. So this screen is a little bit glitchy. If you're having trouble moving it around, just zoom out or zoom in, either one, and then you should be able to use the scroll uh, on the mouse to move it around. So if you can see, I have set up, again, the region and the bit mask. And sometimes on the road, it's actually a little bit easier to see what I mean by the adjacent, uh, the adjacent cells. So basically, you're just going to follow what the road is. I mean, just to be as simple as possible, uh, the bit mask is the road uh, and follow along with what that path would be. So um, if you have any trouble with this, let me know in the comments, but if you follow this exactly, it should work. Also to note, uh, when you make a tile map node, it usually starts off with a size of 64 or so, so make sure you switch those to 16. So like I said, in the script, uh, we will add that function to what's happening. And again, just f to show you what that does, if you don't update the bit mask, it'll just be the brown. If you do update the bit mask region, then you get this nice little road. 
And one of the drawbacks of this method that uh, is pretty obvious is you can tell that this is made by a, a noise texture just by the way it's shaped, but I think it still looks pretty neat. Now the environment map is going to be slightly different. It's actually not going to be an auto tile. We're just going to pick random tiles from it. So, and we're going to loop through the map again. We're going to see if it's above the road cap and be or below it. So what I mean by that is we want to put rocks inside here between the hole and the road, but we also want to have, or we also want to put rocks and mushrooms in these spots too. We don't want to just have it on one side of the road. This is between the road and the holes. And then this last part is also just the large areas of green that I was talking about. Picking a random number between 1 and 100, and then we're going to see if it's below 2. You can also play with this ratio, but uh, I don't make it very high because you don't want rocks and mushrooms on every single spot. Then we're going to pick a random number uh, that's less than 4, and we're going to set the cell to that number. Now the reason why I picked a number less than 4 is when we look at the environment tile map, so we took this, and I actually and I actually added single tiles. How you do that exactly? You add a single tile, you click the region, and boom. If you have the snap set up, it'll just pick that region for you, and it will add it to here. And again, when we look at this, our options are 0, 1, 2, 3. So in our script, this returns a random number of either 0, 1, 2, or 3, and then we will set it to that. So, uh, like I said, this isn't an auto tile, so it's just a basic tile set. So we don't need to update any bit mask in this one. So if we add the environment, so then now that our environment's done, it's and added a fair amount of random uh, mushrooms and rocks and I think it looks pretty good. Now, when we look at these holes here, one thing I did do already is I went into the project settings. You can go to environment and the default clear color. I set to something fairly dark blue. And the reason why I did this is it matches pretty well with the background that I'm going to add. I wanted the bottom of this to just kind of dissipate into that dark abyss. Now this one is slightly different. To actually get this to work properly, if you just grab this, I was kind of annoyed by this little edge here. It grabs like a pixel of the road over here. So I actually went over here and I just offset it by one. And then you should be able to grab what you need. Basically this offset just pushes the X to the right one. I did add a bit mask. Okay, we're not gonna have any that are above or below and we wanna make sure that this is 3x3 three three minimal again. This one is just this end to the right. This is both sides. It'll pick a random one between here. You can actually prioritize which one you want to have more uh, with these two. You can set the priority here. I'm not 100% for sure which one is more often. We'll have to check that out. I don't know if this happens a third of the time, and this one happens two thirds of the time, or if this one is first priority and this one is second priority. I honestly don't know, but we'll figure it out. Going back to the bit mask, like I said, just added this to just give a little bit more randomness instead of just having the same texture over and over again. So when we come down to this make background, we're going to loop through every spot in the map. We're going to see if the grass cell is empty. And then if it is, we're going to check above it to see if there is grass there. So the reason why I split these into two different spots is I don't want to bother with checking both of them over and over and over again. Uh, basically, there's no reason to check to see if there's grass above it if there, if we're not actually going to put it there anyway. So what we're looking for is this empty spot in the grass, and then we're going to check the one above it. But if this spot is empty, there's not a grass above it. So we don't want there to be just a whole bunch of walls in here. We only want there to be walls if there is an empty spot with grass right above it. So again, we're going to 
uh, just make sure that you check the grass, but then we're going to set the background cell. Uh, remember, that's, that's going to be the stone wall. And then we're going to update the bitmask again. When you do yours, you might notice that the background is a lot brighter than mine. And so I kind of played around with a few things. And the best solution that I had is I made just a quick fragment shader to just lower the alpha of the picture. The lower it got, so it just dissipates into darkness. And I think I matched the color, like I said, and with that alpha drop, I think it blends in very nicely. So what that looks like, real quick, uh, without going too much into shaders, um, that's kind of a topic for another time. But since I have it in this example, I want you to be able to make, be able to replicate it. So when you go to the tile set, um, like I said, I went to background, tile set, and I made a new shader material, then you have to type in this exactly. Like I said, I'm not going to go too far into this. It's a very simple shader. Go ahead and copy this and get it in there, and it'll make it just fade into darkness a little bit better. So once you've done all that, we can randomize again, end up with a bunch of interesting paths and holes that you can fall into. So I hope this gives you a little bit of an idea of what's possible with open simplex noise when matched with the tile maps, and specifically the auto tiles.